I said in a book that I wrote many years ago called Gifts for Micahs, there is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. You're not going to find it in something outside of you. It is, and it's like when you understand this and get this, connecting to intention means something that's very powerful to you. There's an observation that I came across in the writing of uh, Power of Intention by a man who gave a lecture, I, I'm not sure the exact year, but it was in the early 1900s. His name was Thomas Troward. And he gave a series of lectures on mental science at the Ed Edinburgh in Scotland, called the Edinburgh and Dory Lectures. And one of those observations, one of those quotations was this. I really love this. He said, the law of flotation was not discovered by the contemplation of the thinking of things. Isn't that great? Imagine yourself trying to figure out, you know, what he made an observation that before about the 15th or 16th centuries, um, all of the ships in the world were made out of wood. And why do you think they made ships out of wood for so many centuries? Because when you put wood in water, what happens? It floats. And our conclusion was, the law of flotation must be, you want things to float, make them out of things that float. But now, we have realized that in studying the law of flotation, that it has nothing to do with what the material is made of. It has to do with the amount of water that is being displaced. So now, all the ships of the world are made out of stuff that doesn't float. And yet they float. We're celebrating now, at this time in our history, uh, the flights, uh, the hundred year anniversary of uh, Orville and Wilbur Wright over in uh, Dayton, Ohio. Imagine the law of flight being, being discovered by someone, by two brothers, contemplating the staying on the ground of things. <laughs> so what we want to do is figure out a way uh, to reconnect ourselves to surrounding ourselves with this, um, with this idea that we are already connected to everything that we need for everything in our life. We've just separated ourselves by believing that we're something that we're not. In a book that I wrote a, a few years back called The Ten Secrets for Success and Inner Peace, which was, the, which was part of a PBS special, one of those secrets is called Treasuring Your Divinity. Treasuring Your Divinity. And I came across this observation, and I was writing some notes on what I'm just talking about, on contemplating things. Listen to these words. We know that by the very nature of the creative process, which is what intention is about, learning to create the life that you want, the world that you want, the people that you want, the excitement that you want, the health that you want, everything. We know that by the very nature of the creative process, that we are one with this originating spirit. And therefore, we are also one with all of its principles. Whatever this is like, whatever it sounds like, whatever it thinks like, whatever it looks like, we are one with it. And consequently, we are one with its infinite personality. We are not here as human beings having spiritual experiences. We are all spiritual beings having human experiences. All of us. We are all infinite. And therefore, our contemplation of this, this source, as the power which we want, gives us the ability to use that power. And the way that we use this process is to contemplate ourselves as surrounded by the conditions which we want to produce. Keep that in mind. Underline that. Surround yourself internally with the conditions. Contemplate them which you want to produce. What is it you want to produce in your life? What do you intend to create for yourself? It's not your ego that's going to do it. It's your free will to reconnect to this, which is the source of everything. You're going to be, by the end of this program, you're going to be in rapport with, in harmony with this. If you call my cell phone, pick up the phone, I don't want to give that number, but uh, <laughs> if you were to call this number, this is what you would get as a message from me. Hi, this is Wayne Dyer that you've reached. And I want to feel good. 
if your call is designed to do anything other than that, <laughs> you have reached the wrong number. <laughs> and I urge you to call Dr. Phil. But feeling good is perhaps the most important thing that I can talk to you about here in cleaning up this link. If you open up the Torah, this ancient spiritual text, the Old Testament, and go to the very opening line, Genesis 1-1, it says, what? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Pretty simple. God is infinite. Out of this source came all the material world. And then if you read down 31 lines later, it says, And all that God created was good. So good and God are synonymous, aren't they? Good and God, just an O, just one extra O. So that when you say, I want to feel good, as you'll see as this program unfolds, you're really saying, in a way, I want to feel God. I want to feel whatever this beautiful source of all, this divine mind, this source of all things, I want to feel what it feels. Now, you might say to yourself, yeah, it's easy to say I want to feel good, but uh, how can I feel good when so much around me is bad? How can I feel good if my sister-in-law is has cancer? And how can I feel good if I know that over on the other side of this planet there are people who are starving to death? And how can I feel good if there are people who are poor and I have money and there are people who are starving? And how can I feel good when my children act in the way that they act? Or how can I feel good? And I suggest to you that when you say I want to feel good, what you're saying is I want to feel God. I want to feel this. I want to connect here. And I want to offer this to you as a very important and powerful piece of advice that came to me years ago. You cannot get sick enough to heal one person on this planet. And you cannot get poor enough to make one person wealthy on this planet. And you cannot get confused enough to unconfuse one person on this planet. No amount of your feeling bad, when you say feeling bad, what you do is you lose your connection to source. And when you lose your connection to source, what happens is you create something called resistance. I can't do this. It's not possible. I, I don't deserve it. This, it's just not something that I can do. I, and when you create this kind of resistance, you have emotions. And these emotions become sadness, fear, worry, anxiety. And what I'd like to offer you is a way for you to use these emotions that you are experiencing at any time in your life and use them as a system, as a, as, a, as a barometer, as a guidance system to say to yourself, what kinds of thoughts am I having that are keeping me from being in rapport with this field of intention? And at any moment that you're not feeling good, you are attracting exactly the opposite of what it is that you would like to attract into your life. You are using this as a way to keep yourself from feeling God or feeling good. If you are listening to the news, and the news is filled with all of the reasons why you should be depressed, and it's not an accident that then they are sponsored by all of the reasons why you should take these uh, narcotics or these pills or whatever it is in order to get over so here's some depression and wait a minute we'll be right back here's a way out of it okay <laughs> I saw a commercial the other day I don't even know what it was for some guy gets up in the morning and he's going out to get clams and he's going out clamming in the morning and he's uh, and he, he's successful at getting the clams he walks off and he's got his clams and I think and then they say call your doctor to see if you need some of this clam-finding miracle drug. There's a drug out there that'll help you find clams if this happens to be one of your problems. All right? And there's, there's something out there, and now we're being told to call our doctors. 
uh, do I need the orange pill, the green pill, the purple pill? Do I need this one? I saw so-and-so reading it, and she was skating on the ice, and I want to skate on the ice. And, there's, and, there's, and it's like it's an endless progression of this. One of the reasons that I put so much of my energy into public television, because when I watch the evening news, when I watch Jim Lehrer in the, on the evening news on PBS, which is the only news that I watch, uh, I don't get bombarded with all of the reasons why. And I also get sort of a, either side of this thing. I don't just get a one-sided view of And it's like, it's an energy system. I'd like to say to you here that my idea about connecting to in intention um, has certain obstacles to getting there. And I just want to very briefly go through what those obstacles are and then move into what it is that you need to do to understand what this field looks like and what you can do to stay connected to it. Keeping in mind these words, I want to feel good. I know my beautiful daughter who will be singing in a little while, uh, Sky. she was working on a music project. And uh, she had come to me and she said, would you, when she was going to school at the University of Miami, and she said, Dad, would you mind if I dropped out of school? And since I have been a person who has never ever listened to any advice that adults ever gave me throughout my life <coughs> about what I should do with my life, because I believe it's something that you have to own yourself. Um, I said, why? And she said, well, I want to sing. I've always just wanted to sing. It's the only thing that's in my heart is singing. And what I've discovered, she said, is that I can't sit in classrooms anymore in my junior year and, um, and be told how to sing by people who are not singing. And she said, I also don't want to study theory any longer. I want to sing. I just feel it in my heart. I said, that's great. I said, I'd like to take you with me when I, when I uh, talk all over the country, all over the world. And I'd like you to sing for me because I'm always so proud to have her on stage with me, as you'll see why shortly. And I said to her, I said, honey, but what you've got to do is perhaps put together a, a project, perhaps put together a CD, get some way that you can come out and sing at the talks and include on this some of the music uh, that is relevant to what I speak about <clears throat> and she said okay and I was over on Maui and I was writing and uh, she called me she said dad the problem is that the musicians that I need to be able to do this um, are not available and you can't get them and I said Sky you've got to contemplate yourself as surrounded by the conditions which you wish to produce don't think about the musicians as not being available. Contemplate yourself surrounded by the musicians, and you'll see that when you reconnect to this source, this source will provide. It always does. It's an, uh, an unfailing system. It's, it's fail-safe. She said, all right, all right. You're dead the dork, you know. <laughs> she called me back the next day. She said, you're not going to believe this, Dad. I did what you said last night, and all the musicians are available. I just can't believe it. She said, they called the ones that I wanted, especially they had a cancellation on something. She said, the only problem is that the studios that I need in order to be able to record it are unavailable. There's no studios available in any place in South Florida, and I wanted good, and I want to get this in. And I had given her a deadline of like four days to get this done, <laughs> an entire CD. So uh, she called me back and uh, she said, "How do I get a studio?" I said, "Sky, contemplate yourself as surrounded by the conditions which you wish to produce." The law of flotation was not discovered. All right, I got it with the flotation, okay? <laughs> she called me back the next morning. She said, Dad, it's a miracle. <laughs> she said, the studios had a cancellation, and the, two, the studio that I really need and the musicians, they're all available. I can put the whole thing together. It's so exciting. This stuff really works. I said, of course it does. She said, the only problem is <laughs> that it costs quite a bit of money. To pay these musicians and to have the studio time, I said, Sky, honey, you've got to contemplate yourself <laughs> as surrounded by the conditions which you want to produce. She said, that's why I'm calling you. <laughs> and I said, but honey, I want to feel good. <laughs> she said, maybe you should call Dr. Phil. <laughs> He said, and this will make you feel good because you will be contemplating yourself as surrounded by a daughter who is so... She used it all right back on me. <laughs> and she did it and she got it done and she was able to, to produce it. And, you know, it sounds like a silly little example, but it's like the obstacles that we have to creating what we want very often are in the ways that we perceive ourselves as 
disconnected here. And every thought that you have that says, I can't do it, is resistance to connecting to source. And every thought that you have that says, it's never worked before, that's resistance to connecting to this source, to what is being, what I call, vibrating to source energy. Getting back to your, having your desires, what you want to create in vibrational harmony with this highest energy in the universe. The obstacles that we have, most of us are, there's three of them. The major one is the ego, which I talked about earlier. You have to learn to stop being offended. There are people out there who are going through life looking for occasions to be offended. And you very seldom will find yourself disappointed. <laughs> and if you don't like the way uh, somebody's dressed, that's a way to be offended. If you don't like the language that they use, I, one of the things I do is I, I run in hallways uh, when I'm traveling on the road. Because I like to do my running every day, but I don't like to, if it's very cold or very hot, I don't like to have to carry a lot. So I just carry a pair of, of shorts. And I run up and down the hallway like this. I run here and I run up and down and I get an hour, and I get an hour of running out there in the hallways of hotels. Now, there are people behind the doors, very often, who don't anticipate a sweaty man in the running on the hallway. And there are times when the doors will open and I'll be running and I'll hear someone walk away. What is that guy doing? What's wrong with him? Doesn't he know that there's a trap? This isn't the place. And he's using my experience out here as a reason to be offended. And he's still on the way down. He's, he's yelling at his wife about the fact that I shouldn't be there. Oftentimes, uh, goes home, kicks the cat, whatever it is, because... <laughs> but one day I was running, and there's a, there's a different view of it as well very interesting because I was r running in the hallway one time <laughs> and the door opened and a woman had to be 92 93 years old so it was in Little Rock Arkansas and she opened up opened up the door and I was running right past her she had a little walker she said young man I immediately loved this lady huh? <laughs> she said what the hell are you doing <laughs> I said, well, ma'am, I said, I stopped, I was running in place. I said, I'd just like to get my heart rate going up there. It's really good, and I didn't want to go outside because it's very hot out there today. She said, you got that much energy this time of the morning to be out there running? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, why don't you come out into this room with me for a little while? <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a woman who had a great sense of humor. With the same, she wasn't looking for an occasion to be offended. How many times do you find yourself doing that? Or stopping yourself from feeling superior? Or from needing to be right? or from needing to win, or from needing more, or to achieve, or to be concerned with your reputation. All of these have nothing to do with source energy. All of that has to do with this identity that you've taken on that says, I am, all of these accomplishments are what I do. That's one. The second of these obstacles is what I call the energy of your life. Everything in the universe has energy. Everything. That's why I promote a book so powerfully called Power Versus Force by David Hawkins, a medical doctor out in, uh, in Sedona, Arizona, where he talks about the, the thoughts that we have and how you can use kinesthesiology, you can just use muscle tests to determine whether something works or doesn't work for you and whether it's strong or not. And every thought that you have, if you have and he has compartmentalized all of these different thoughts, and it's like he even suggested that the music that we listen to has energy in it. The photographs that we have hung, hanging in our home, the prayers that we have, and the television shows that we watch, there is very low energy out there. The average child in America has already seen 12,000 murders, simulated murders, in his living room on cable and commercial television before his 14th birthday. Imagine, imagine, 12,000 simulated murders. You never see that on public television. That's why I'm here doing this for public television. Because it's a place where you are not allowed to send that kind of energy out. So my son, I was over on, over on Maui, and I was, uh, we were there for the summer, and all of a sudden I hear this crazy music going, playing throughout the whole place. And it's some kind of gangster thing and wanting to kill people and loud, loud swearing and all of this. I said, Sans, what is this? What are you listening to? He said, Dad, it's really cool, man. This is rap. This is really, you know, I'm, you know, 16, you know. I said, go get the CD. And this is something that I read in Power Versus Force. He said, what do you mean? I said, go get the CD. Now, he's a big, strong, 16-year-old uh, strapping kid, six foot tall, you know, very muscular, and <clears throat> a lot of testosterone. And uh, so he, uh, he brings the CD and he said, what do you want me to do with this? I said, well, set it on the table and take that banana. And I had some bananas there. I said, take that organic banana, place it next to your heart, put your arm out, and what I'd like you to do is uh, resist me as hard as you can, 
with that banana next to your heart. And he did, and I couldn't, I put two fingers on, I couldn't budge his arm. I said, now take that CD and put that next to your heart. He took the CD with the energy in it. As hard as this is to imagine for yourself, you can try this in your own work. And he held that next to him, and he became powerless to my two fingers pushing down on his arm. The energy weakened him. The energy of the foods that we eat, the shows that we watch, the people that we uh, surround ourselves with. Even the th you know, most of you know that I'm a camel. And a camel is an animal that starts out every morning on his knees, and he goes to bed every night on his knees, and he can go 24 hours without a drink. And that's something that I do every day. I go 24 hours without a drink. And it isn't because I labeled myself as an alcoholic or anything like that. I was told by a very powerful and important teacher that if you want to reach the levels that I would like you to be able to understand, where you can literally do a somersault into the inconceivable and see yourself as capable of attracting and healing and being able to create abundance, if you want to be able to be all that you can be, he said you've got to stop putting substances into your body that are uh, deteriorating the body and, and deleterious to the health of your body. And he said, alcohol just happens to be one of those things. So I don't take a particular moral position on it. I did it because I didn't want that energy into my life. So look at the energy of your life, the places that you accumulate, the friends that you have, the people that find fault with what you're doing. Look at all of uh, the, uh, the way, even, even a simple little thing like feng shui, which is a Chinese form of how you, how you arrange the furniture in your, it's, it's, so, it's so cool, but I've got a lady who works with me over in Maui, and every time I go away, she'll come back, and she'll have this thing moved over here, and this thing over there, and I'll say, but, you know, I like this here, this is where I shave. No, 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 the feng shui of that isn't quite right, and you, have, you don't want to have a red next to you. I just listen to her. My place is one of the most pleasant and beautiful places. Of course, having it on the ocean has a, a lot to do with it as well. <laughs> but I believe that energy is in everything. Change the energy of your life and reconnect to the energy of spirit. Spiritual energy is healing.